everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to share with you five ways that you can make acrylic paint backgrounds for your handmade cards. These are really simple and easy. They're using things you already have on hand. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I want to talk about the different kinds of acrylic paint I will be using today. The first is what you see right here. This is technically a heavy body acrylic paint. However, it is like the Recollections brand, the Michaels brand. So it's not quite as heavy body as a true heavy body. It's in between. And this is what I will be using the majority of the time. The next kind of paint I will be using is what you see right here. This is what you can get in tons of different colors at your local craft store. This is more of a hobby craft paint. It dries matte. Um, very cheap, a lot of different colors you can buy it in. I'll show you some fun techniques that you can use this for. There are several different brands you can buy. I am using the Craft Smart, which again is the Michaels brand, I believe, um, just their store brand. But again, you can buy different brands and they are a little bit more opaque when you put them on. The cheaper paints are gonna be a little bit more transparent. The final paint I will be using today is this heavy body acrylic paint. This is a true artist paint. It's from the Crafters Workshop. This is very thick. It's almost icing consistency. Um, it holds up very well. It doesn't fall. So any sort of texture that you create with this is going to stay that texture. This is a really fun product to use, but it is the most expensive of the three. So keep that in mind as you're thinking of the different projects and the different ways I show you to use acrylic paint. Use the best for your budget. Now the first thing I'm going to be using to make my acrylic backgrounds is a brayer. These are very cheap and it's a great tool to have on hand for card making, for journaling, all those different kinds of things. I'm also going to be working on cardstock. This is white heavyweight cardstock. This is 110 pounds. It's going to hold up to the wetness of the paint pretty well and it's not going to warp or pill or fall apart on me. I will also be using painter's tape. This is the purple painter's tape. It is a lightweight tape. It is comparable to washi tape. This is just something again you can buy at your local hardware store it is a lot cheaper than buying it online in your craft shops. Um, so go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's and pick up a roll of this. I've had this one for years and I'm still working on using it up. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm working on this base of cardstock is take some of that painter's tape and rip it right in half. I only need two pieces. That's going to create my four sides. And that will create a little bit of an outline. I am putting these into a rectangle. This is going to mask off the area where I want the paint. I love doing this technique, even with inks, ripping my tape. That gives a nice ripped look to your outlines. It's a lot of fun and very simple and easy to do this. So even if you don't want to use paint, you can use the same technique with um inks and ink blend a nice background. I've done it a ton of times. Then off to the side, I have a palette I will be working on. This is just a piece of plastic paper, nothing fancy. I'm starting off with some black acrylic paint. Black is fairly easy to find no matter where you are. And then I will be using my brayer to brayer this on. The thing with using your paint and your brayer, you want to create a nice even surface area of paint. So work it a little bit. Start rolling it out, create a nice even layer, and then just start brayering it on. Now you might wonder why you would use a brayer instead of just a brush. The brayer creates the smoothest texture. I will show you the difference later on between the brush look and the brayer look. The brayer is just a nice smooth surface and you're not gonna get as smooth as the surface any other way. It is the best way to create a smooth, opaque background with paint on your card bases without using a ton of product. I am turning my brayer to the left, to the right. I'm using it horizontally. I'm using it vertically to make sure that I get into all the cracks and crevices of those paint, 
or of those uh, tape marks that I've made. That is the thing whenever you rip the tape, it is going to create not a straight line. It's gonna be a little harder to get the paint in some of those gaps. Just take your time, keep going over it. That's the great thing about paint. Um, it will dry as you're working, but you can just keep going over it and over it and layering it and layering it and it will be just fine. This brayer is also going to make sure that I don't use a ton of extra paint and that it doesn't push the paint underneath that tape. I didn't have to create a super good seal with that tape because I'm not putting a ton of pressure on this, the paint, and I'm not using a ton of product either. So it's not going to make that tape lift up. It's not going to go underneath the tape at all. I'm just using that brayer to gently place the paint down and then smooth it out with the roller. Once I have it completely covered, I go over it a few more times, just up and down to smooth it out, and then I'll set it aside to dry. This turns out beautifully. I love these brayered backgrounds. It didn't take long to dry because again, this isn't a super thick layer of paint. And if you are impatient and you don't wanna just set it aside and let it air dry, you can always use a heat tool and just quickly heat set it. That'll dry it even faster. Now to remove the tape is very simple. This is a low tack painter's tape. So it is a little bit easier than a regular painter's tape to remove. Even with a regular painter's tape, all you have to remember is to pull it directly back on itself. So don't pull up at all, pull straight back and you shouldn't have any ripping. If you do start to see any ripping, immediately stop and go to the other side and start peeling from that way. If you do get any ripping at all, that can easily be fixed with a sanding block or a sanding eraser. It's not that big of a deal. Now, once you get to peeling off where the paint is, you do wanna be a little extra careful. With this, it doesn't matter so much, um, but if you do have a thicker layer of paint, you can peel some of the paint off if you're not careful. Just again, peel that straight back on itself and peel it towards the paint that way it kind of breaks that seal and you get those nice crisp edges. But as I'm peeling this tape away, you can see I don't have clean edges. That is from using that tear, using tearing that tape and creating that torn edge look. It's such a fun look, super simple and easy to do, but it's a little something different. It's not a clean look. I absolutely love it. If you wanted to, you could easily do this technique and create those clean lines. Just don't tear your tape. You can measure, you can be as precise as you want. I wasn't too worried about this. I just wanted a nice, weird rectangle. Some people will also reuse their painter's tape. If you're ink blending or doing something along those lines, absolutely reuse your tape as many times as you can. With the paint, I do don't do it just because layering up paint over paint over paint first of all it can create a really high kind of guide so then you can't get as close to the edges as you layer second of all paint can start to flake so then you might end up with black paint flakes in your pink paint so just don't reuse it with this technique throw it away again I've had that same um, roll of tape forever so I created a couple of cards with this technique. The first one I did use that black background. I just trimmed around it with my scissors, popped it up on a card base, and then I added a SVG cutout that I put on some bright purple ink. This one, super easy. I love the way it turned out. I will put those SVG files up for free over on my blog because I used it on several cards throughout this video. I also use that same technique to create this background of the dark hunter green on craft card stock. I just cut out a little strip right out of the center, stamp my sentiment in that strip, and then I added again some SVG cut files from that same set that I'll put up for free. All right, the next backgrounds I'm going to do are with paintbrushes. 
this does not create as soft or smooth of a surface um, as the brayered backgrounds. If you are looking for a nice, flat, even surface, go with the brayer. With the brush, you are going to get brush strokes. That is a great look if that's what you're going for. You can use different brushes for different looks um, to create different brush strokes in your paint. So you can really layer it up and then create some nice strokes with either a fan brush or you can get kind of a dappled brush. A lot of different looks you can create with different brushes. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and go for a nice flat look. Again, I used the tearing technique with my tape and created a rectangle, a little bit larger of one. And then I'm using this nice terracotta color. Now with a brush, the paint does go down thinner. I don't know why, it just does. So it is a little bit easier to get into the cracks and the crevices of the tape, but it does take a few more layers with the brush. You can go very light, very transparent, and that's fine. I wanted a little bit more solid color, so I added a few more layers. I'm starting off by just quickly putting down this first layer. And then once I get it completely covered with that first layer of paint, I'm just going to continue to layer up the color right on top of the previous color that I've put down. Now, as I get more of an opaque look, I'm going to use longer brush strokes to really kind of even out those brush strokes um, so they're not so noticeable on the paper. I love the brush stroke look. I just don't want that many of them or those short little lines that kind of cut off in the center. Again, one of the great things about using acrylic paint, it dries super fast. So I don't have to wait long for this first layer to dry. Then I can come right back in with the second layer and layer right on top of that. With the brush, if you don't want a nice transparent where you can see through it, you are going to need to add a few layers for that more opaque look. My second layer, I am going to really layer it on and I am going to use nice long brush strokes to um, blend it out and cover up all of those brush strokes. But you can see the second layer is probably going to do it. I'm putting on a very thick layer, again, using those long brush strokes to really make sure I've got as little of the strokes visible as possible. And of course, the more layers you put on, the longer it takes to dry, you can use the same techniques as before. Let it air dry or use a heat tool to dry it. I prefer to let mine air dry. I just set it off to the side. And if you want to prevent warping, use your tape to your benefit. Tape it down to a piece of hard board or keep it taped to the surface that you're working on as it dries and it won't warp at all if hardly any. So once this is dry, I can go ahead and take the tape off again. I'm using the same technique as before. You just want to pull that tape straight back on itself and pull it towards the paint so you kind of break that seal. Especially with the brush, you are using more layers of paint. So it is going to be a thicker layer um, to kind of break the seal. So you really want to make sure you're pulling that tape straight back on itself and you're pulling it towards the paint. It may seem counterintuitive, but it really helps break those, um, the paint and the tape apart. If you do go outside your tape at all, that isn't a big deal. You can either trim your paper down or you can use a sanding block or a sanding eraser or a craft knife and just scrape off that layer of paint. Really quite simple to fix that mistake. I absolutely adore the way this one turned out. I love this color of paint. I finished this off simply. I did just trim down my cardstock, um, trimmed off that little speck of paint. I added a flower SVG cut that I made myself and a little hello down at the bottom. Very, very simple, but I do, this is probably my favorite of the cards. I also did the same technique with some red and then I added more of those wildflower SVGs that I'll put on my blog. So the next kind of acrylic paint background I want to show you how to make are 
backgrounds made with acrylic knives. There are so many palette knives on the market. I just have a cheap um, set that are plastic because I know myself well enough. Sometimes I don't clean them and they just go in the garbage. So I like to have the nice cheap ones that I don't feel bad about wasting. With this technique that I'm showing you now, it is best to use a very heavy body acrylic paint. You want it to hold up to the texture you are putting down. These are your most expensive acrylic paints, um, but they do do the best job. I am going to use my palette knife. I've created a little bit of an outline with some painter's tape. I did not tear it. I'm already going to have quite a buildup of paint on this. I don't want to add any more trouble with peeling up this painter's tape later on. And then I am using my palette knife. I am scraping up some of that paint and really collecting it onto the back of my palette knife, almost like butter, like you would grab butter from a butter dish. Then I am smushing it down onto the paper. I'm going at an angle and I am just layering it up. Now you can do this with different colors. I am doing it all in one color, so it's a little hard to see until I do zoom you in, but I'm creating these wave looks. This is such a neat technique and it's so easy to do. You literally just scoop up your paint and smush it down at an angle and then just kind of scrape it onto the paper. And that creates these little hills and waves with the paint. Um, you are putting quite a lot of paint onto the paper. This one by far takes the longest time to dry. Plus heavy body acrylic paint just takes longer to dry in general as well. So keep that in mind. This will also warp on you if you are not careful. It's a lot of paint, it's a lot of moisture. You can do this on a mixed media paper and you'll have better luck. I didn't want that added extra bulk because it's already bulky enough with the paint. I did it on cardstock and I just taped it to a piece of hardboard as this dried and that is going to cut down on my warping. Now here you can see I have went all the way up to the paint or all the way up to the tape with the paint. There is a lot left over on the paint or on the tape itself. You can scrape that away and save it. Um, I like to do that just because it is a lot of wasted paint and this paint is expensive. So you can just scrape that off, put it right back onto your palette and use it again for a different project. This will also help when you are removing your tape. The less paint layer you have to go through, the better. Um, so just be very careful. Don't touch inside where your tape is because you don't want to mess up the texture. I will very carefully lift this up. If you don't need your work surface, just leave it taped down. Um, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and peel mine up. There you get a little bit better view of that texture. It is so fun. And then I will just tape it down to this piece of hardboard, let it dry, air dry. Again, you can bring a heat gun to it. I don't like to. I like to let it air dry. That way I don't have any chance of it cracking. And there's what it looks like once it is dry. Um, hard to the touch, a little bit of warping, but nothing horrible. And it's ready to go onto a card. Peel the tape straight back on itself. This is, it's going to break that seal and allow it to come up really cleanly. I love the way this one turned out. It's so much fun. It is a little bit thicker. So keep that in mind if you are mailing your cards at all. But it does dry very hard, so you don't really have to worry about it smashing as it does go through the mail. Now, you have some leftover paint, or I did, on my palette. I didn't want to waste that, so I am going to just use my palette knife and smush this down onto the paper. I'm using this teal color and then I wanted to have a little bit of mixing with it and not create mud. So I'm also using a hot pink and I will use a different palette knife and kind of mix these two and smush it down as well. This is definitely more of um, a mixed media artsy look if you will, but I like to just use my palette knife, create a little bit of a blend between the two colors 
and then use my palette knife to create texture. Not necessarily those waves, but almost like um, spikes, but not hard to the touch. It just, it's a really fun texture. It's not soft. It's not um, smooth. It's just a really fun textural look to your cards and feel at that. This would be great in journaling, creating some backgrounds with this. All you do is pat your palette knife onto the paint and pull straight up. Very, very simple and easy to do. You can go in and add different colors. I like to mix two of them together. So then I've got this pink, I've got some blues, I've got some greens, I've got some purples. You can even scrape some paint away if you want to and create some looks that way. I like to keep mine all on there. I did um, just kind of block out this fun shape, but again, you could do this completely with just a rectangle or over the entire background and really have some fun with it. This is a lot of paint, so as this is drying, make sure it is taped down to a surface. That way it can dry without any warping. I like to tape mine to an old clipboard or a piece of hardboard and just let it air dry. But once this is done, it's so much fun. I love the texture this creates. I'm just peeling up my tape. The thing with this one, it is a lot of paint and it is full coverage. So as you are peeling this up, you might have some of your tape break. Just take your time, peel the tape straight back on itself towards the paint just like before and you should get your clean lines. For this background, I did not create a card. I didn't love the shape that I masked out. I wish I would have just done a rectangle, but this funky shape just really didn't fit my style. I do love the way it turned out though. So I did this same technique with some yellow paint, which I'll show you in a moment. But first I want to talk to you about that wave background. So all I did with that one is trim it down so it was slightly smaller in size with just a little bit of a frame around it just creating that focal point on the card and that's all it needed. So all I did was add a simple sentiment to the bottom and this one's ready to go. Now for that fun texture background, I recreated the same look just with yellow paint and then I added a black mat to the back of it and popped up that little dandelion that's from the wildflower set that I'm putting on my blog. It's an SVG cut and I added a simple thank you kind of stenciled or label maker sentiment down at the bottom. Again, I made those, um, I'll put that up sometime on my blog. So for my next backgrounds, I am going to stay on the texture kick and I am using sponges to create my next kind of texture. Depending on the type of sponge you use, you're going to create different looks. I'm using a kitchen sponge that I cut up into smaller pieces just because these are so cheap, I don't bother washing them out. I just cut little snippets off and throw them away after I'm done using them. Now with the kitchen sponge, these have larger holes in the sponge. This is going to create a larger bubbled look. If you use a makeup sponge, it's going to be more smooth. Keep that in mind as you're thinking about what you wanna use. I'm using the kitchen sponge with the larger holes. I want it to look more watery, kind of like an aquatic background. And to get that look, I'm also using a different kind of paint. I am using the thinner acrylic paint that has that matte look to it when it's dry. Um, but this is just the craft paint, very cheap. And I'm using it in this aqua color. All I do is put some down on a palette, dip in my sponge, and start dabbing my sponge onto the paper. Again, I've used that low tech painter's tape to create a little bit of a frame around my background. I'm working on heavyweight cardstock. This does have a little bit more watery consistency. It is more, has more moisture to it, but this is a very thin layer I'm putting on so I didn't really need to worry about any warping. If you're layering and layering and layering this paint on and trying to create a really opaque background, probably not gonna work. Um, it's just not meant for that. 
So keep that in mind as you choose your backgrounds, make sure you choose your paint and tools appropriately. Another thing with the sponging technique, a little bit of paint goes a long way. I really didn't need as much as I put on my palette. Remember, you can always add more. You really can't put it back in, so start off small and keep adding as you need to. This technique reminds me of that old like sponge painting techniques on the walls that people used to do in like the 90s. I absolutely love this look. It's really fun, a lot of texture. This would be great for aquatic backgrounds or skies. Just a lot of different looks this can really go for. This really takes no time to dry at all, but as it is drying, just keep it taped down. That way, warping is kept at a minimum. Again, tape it either to your work surface or to a piece of hardboard, but you can really kind of see the texture there. And here it is as it's dry. No more shine, very, very matte, um, but a very thin, thin layer. So really with this one, you don't even have to worry about peeling the tape towards the paint. There really isn't a nice seal there. You don't have a huge layer of paint. It's quite easy with this one, but I absolutely love the way this one turned out. This would be a great one as well to layer up over a brayered background. So put down a very dark brayered background and then sponge a lighter color on top. You're still going to see that darker color underneath, but you'll get the texture on the top. A lot of fun things you can do with this one. Absolutely adore this technique. I kept my finished card for this one very, very simple. All I did was add a black silhouette flower frame that again, I made and a little thinking of you sentiment. And finally, I am staying on the texture train and I will be using plastic wrap to create some great texture on this background. Again, I'm working on heavyweight cardstock. I'm using that low tack painter's tape masked off the edges to create a nice rectangle and a frame, if you will. And I will just take a piece of this plastic wrap. This is nothing fancy. It's the cheap, great value Walmart brand. You don't want anything expensive here because you're just gonna take a small piece, crumple it up, use it to put on your paint, and then toss it. You don't need to try and save this. So once I have my plastic wrap cut, I will go ahead and get the paint ready. The paint I am using is the Artist or Master's Touch. It's the Michaels brand of the acrylic paint that I used the very first go round. This is kind of a heavy body, but it's not super heavy body. So it gives a little bit of texture without a lot of bulk. When doing this technique, I like to work off a palette, kind of like with everything. And my palette is simply a piece of, it's a thick plastic paper. It's a stencil paper actually, where you can make your own stencils, but I use it as a palette. Any flat surface where your paint isn't gonna dry will do. And I also like to brayer this out and create a little bit more of a flat surface to work with. That way I can pick up not more paint, but a bigger area of paint. Then I just simply crumple up the plastic wrap, dip it into that paint, and start pouncing it up and down on the paper. Something I like to do with this technique is layer up different colors. So once I have a little bit of that lighter purple on, I'll actually come in with a darker purple. But it doesn't have to be tone on tone. It can also be different colors. You can do ones that mix together. You can do more of a vintage look if you want. It really is up to you. You can also use this and layer, use this technique and layer it up over a brayered background or a brushed on background. That will create even more textures. I also like to use this technique with um, metal looks, like your bronzes, your gold, your silvers, those kinds of things but I'll show you that in a moment. For this one, I kept it very simple and just used my two colors of purple. They blend together really well and it looks great. So with this technique, depending on if you are layering over another one or if you're doing it on its own, either way, there really isn't a whole lot of paint here. So it doesn't take too awfully long to dry and removing the tape isn't that big of a deal. Again, you just wanna pull it straight back on itself I'm using that low tack tape like I did before. 
and just make sure I pull it straight back. But as I'm pulling that back, you can see I get a nice clean line. There is no seepage underneath. And again, I have a little bit of white spots um, just because I didn't layer this over a solid color. However, this is a great technique to layer over. So start off with your lighter base, layer a darker one over top using the saran wrap, or you can do like I did on a journal page, which I'll show you in a moment. But to finish this card off, I did keep it fairly simple. All I did was trim out, I left about a quarter of an inch around the um, paint itself, and then I added a black mat underneath. I added a happy birthday sentiment with that label maker sentiment, and I added a little black wildflower cutout that I will again put up on my blog for free. Now something else I did with this technique was I used it over a solid color paint in a journal page. I used it over a dark blue that I used my brayer to put down, and then I used a bronze color and literally just used my saran wrap to kind of speckle it on. This creates a really fun look, a little bit more distressed, a little bit more vintage, very easy to do, but it is a great focal point or even a great background. And again, I only did it with one color, but you can absolutely layer up color upon color upon color and really build up all those different layers and create just a gorgeous background. There's a closer look at that one. You get a little bit more of that bronzing effect. And that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed a look at all of these different techniques that you can do to create backgrounds with acrylic paints. I had a lot of fun playing around with the paints and creating all of these different cards to show you today. You'll have to let me know down in the comments below which one is your favorite. I have to say mine is that brick background with the green and yellow. I just love that kind of bohemian color scheme. But you'll have to let me know which one is your favorite. There's mine right there. And if you haven't already, be sure to go down to the description box below and follow the link to get your Wildflower SVG set for free over on my blog today. That's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't, you can subscribe to the left. And over on the right is another video that you may enjoy. Happy crafting, everyone.